Hello everyone, it is time to lay down the law of the land here on the Mr. Sketchhead channel. I am finally, after years and years and years, going to rate all of the Souls games and finally put them in order. This is the Mr. Sketchhead official Dark Souls slash Sekiro slash Bloodborne tier list ranking. People have been asking me for a long time about this video. Uh, it's pretty much the number one uh, question whenever I stream or something. It's like, what do you think of this Souls game? What do you think of that Souls game? After the boss thing, you know, this is pretty... I think that this is actually more common than the boss thing. So, yeah. I'm finally going to make this video. No matter how I rank these games, people are, people are going to be upset. But what can I do? This is my personal opinion. I've been playing a fair bit of Souls these past couple of years. So... I feel like I know what's up, I know what's up, but this is, in the end, still my opinion. I'm just gonna rank the games, talk a little bit about each of them, and yeah, let's get into this video. It's hot as fuck here today, it's the middle of summer, I'm sitting here, I had a couple of beers, perfect time to do this. How I got this, I, I didn't even do it S to F or whatever, because I feel like if you rank them letter-wise, it immediately kind of, you know, judges each game's quality. So if I put something on like E tier, people are going to think that I think the game is shit. Whereas I don't think that. I honestly think that every single one of the Souls games is good. Every single one of these games is solid. Gameplay wise, just when you think about it, they're functional, non glitchy. Like, like they work, they're a complete experience. So it really comes down to personal preference. Listen, if your list is completely inverse to mine, whatever, but I'm gonna, you know, try to give you my reasonings for each of my picks. Uh, going through one to six, let's get started here with number six. Which one of these games do I think falls in last? And again, please don't think these as uh, a judgment on a game's quality. Uh, Last one is going to have to go to Demon's Souls. Honestly, Demon's Souls is in a tough spot. Uh, it's always been in a tough spot because it is the genesis of the series. It is the OG. It is the OG of OG Souls games. And without it, uh, the series wouldn't exist. Uh, if Demon's Souls didn't become a moderate success, I doubt we would have any of the other games. But when it comes down to it, Demon's Souls has a lot of issues. But before we talk about the issues, let's talk about the good stuff. I think Demon's Souls has excellent atmosphere, uh, excellent characters and excellent atmosphere is really what kind of drives Demon's Souls. Uh, each five of the areas are so unique. And that really comes down to the fact that the game uses a central hub teleportation mechanic, essentially allowing FromSoft to get like really creative and out there with the areas because like the areas themselves don't have to link together in a coherent sense and there doesn't have to be like a, a solid world they can really go out and do whatever they want the same with the characters this is the game that introduced characters like Patches uh, the Shrine Maiden slash Doll slash Firekeeper uh, in fact I would argue that this is the best hub uh, keeper uh, out of all the Souls games. And again, the gameplay of Demon Souls is very solid. Uh, there's good level design, good level layouts. Uh, the game is challenging, even though this game is challenging in a different way in that the challenge comes more from the areas rather than the bosses. In fact, the bosses are fairly easy in this game. However, let's talk about why I rank this game in the number six spot. Honestly, Demon Souls it's kind of a product of its age and the fact that it started a lot of things uh, also means that there's a lot of kind of experimental gameplay ideas scattered throughout Demon's Souls which obviously have never ever come back in other Souls games for a good reason. The world tendency is really cryptic, uh, it's not well explained. In fact, I would say that Demon's Souls probably has the worst tutorial out of all the Souls games. A lot of the mechanics are not very well explained. Again, the bosses are very, very simplistic. Uh, there's only about three bosses in the entire game that actually, I would say, offer up a challenge. And even out of those three, one of them uh, offers a challenge because they're honestly kind of bullshit talking about man-eaters. And 
you know, I feel like there's a lot of like small little frustrating things with Demon Souls. Before the remaster came out, I would have rated uh, the graphics of Demon Souls as a negative as well. The game really, the PS3 version really shows its age, and it's not even like Dark Souls One, which sort of holds up even to this day. Uh, Demon Souls does not hold up at all, the original at least graphically. Now, obviously, the remaster looks excellent. However, there comes an issue with the remaster that PS5s are just still not available. So a vast majority of people who actually want to play Demon's Souls Remastered are unfortunately unable to access it. That's not a negative of the game. The game like doesn't have anything to do with that, but still. I would say, you know, think of this list as which Souls game would I like to most play if I just sit down, I have all my consoles and I'm like, let's play a Souls game. And Demon Souls does not come up very often. I'll play it once in a while. I'll enjoy a build. You can like get really OP in this game. Uh, I'll blast through the game, have fun, and pretty much forget about it again for the next like year. It's a good game. The series will always owe a great deal to it, but unfortunately, it does show its age. All right, moving on to the number five spot, we are going to play Dark Souls Three. This game is very polarizing. Uh, there is one half of the community who absolutely adores this game, owing to the fact that this is by far the most popular Souls game in terms of uh, number of games sold, as I believe. Uh, this was basically uh, almost a big budget uh, AAA hit. So there is a huge chunk of the community who absolutely adores Dark Souls 3. And there is also an equally large amount of the community who absolutely hates and I mean truly hates this game. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I think Dark Souls 3 does a lot of things right. It is the conclusion of the series and it is kind of a love letter to all the other Souls games. I think the gameplay is very solid for Dark Souls 3. I do like what they did on uh, keeping kind of some of the faster elements of Bloodborne but also making it feel Souls-like. Uh, I've actually most recently played Dark Souls 3 on stream and I had a blast. There is good variety in this game in terms of weapons, spells, magic, and you know, you can definitely tell in terms of graphical overhauls to like comparing Demon's Souls and Dark Souls 1 to this game. It's just night and day. The environments look solid. There's like a lot going on visually. The art direction is excellent. Uh, it probably has, I would say, the second or third best music in the series. Uh, I, I do like a lot of the soundtrack in this game, outside of like some of the really like overly saturated, super loud orchestra hits. Um, yeah, so this game does a lot of things right. It has two solid DLC packs. Uh, so a lot of things are going for Dark Souls 3. However, there's quite a lot of other negatives. Really, I would boil down my biggest complaint with this game to the fact that the first half especially, and really mainly the whole game itself, is just way, way too linear. There's one path with a couple of divergent like options, and that's it. This hurts Dark Souls 3 a lot because Souls games thrive on replayability and Dark Souls 3 really struggles with replayability because you do the same shit every single playthrough. Again, there is one place where you can diverge for like the first half of the game, uh, which is whether you go to Cathedral of the Deep or you go straight on to fight the Abyss Watchers. That's like the one main diversion for the first half of the game and it's just boring, man. Uh, honestly. As much as I like the gameplay of Dark Souls 3, going through the same fucking area with no option to diverge, aside from the fact that you can pick what weapon you use, really hurts the game. I think Dark Souls 3 also struggles with difficulty scaling quite a bit. Uh, listen, I'm hardcore. I can take difficult, but I feel like some of the bosses in this game, especially the DLC, are way overboard and they belong like in Sekiro or Bloodborne, where you have like faster movement, less stamina costs per uh, dodge rolling and all and actions in general. Some of the bosses in this fucking game are absolutely bullshit. And 
it really mars the DLCs as a whole because the DLCs themselves are excellent in terms of like level design and concept but I just do not like a lot of the bosses and really the last thing I would say about this game is that sometimes it does take fan service too far owing to the fact that a lot of the NPCs are straight up control C control V um, same personality same backstories uh, even like similar themed quest lines so you know on one hand it's a love letter to the series but on the other hand it can feel like from just got kind of lazy with some of their ideas all right let's move on at the number four spot we are going to play Sekiro Sekiro is the Souls game Souls game I use very loosely uh, that I'm playing right now actually go check out my Sekiro playthrough after this <coughs> by the way uh, it's a super solid game like Sekiro really thrives on being a focused experience they knew exactly what they were going for they did it they executed it and I feel like it turned out successfully I really like everything about Sek Sekiro the combat system the visceral kind of feeling the stealth mechanics the platforming the setting I like everything about Sekiro um, However, it does suffer as a Souls game because of what it is. And really, this is, like Dark Souls 3, a very polarizing game in the end with the community. And I completely understand the complaints. The issue with Sekiro, the issue is that there is one single way to play. Whereas most of the Souls games offer you a wealth of options, where you want to go for magic, heavy weapons, light weapons, um, faith pyromancy whatever Sekiro gives you one single way deflect use your sword Mikiri counters jumps and that's it and again this combat system is very solid sometimes it feels almost like a rhythm game rather than a, like a souls game uh, it's very technical when you like get things right it can feel extremely satisfying however if you do not enjoy this combat system you are going to have a miserable time with Sekiro because the game does not allow any straying from what it wants you to do. And it hurts it. It hurts it because it suffers from almost the exact same issue as Dark Souls 3 suffers from, which is replayability. You have one weapon. Uh, the way you upgrade your prosthetics and the options you get are very limited as well. So there's one way to play. Every single playthrough of Sekiro is basically boiled down to you doing the same things and whereas I personally really like the combat system and what the game does it's not a Souls game that you can just play over and over again like Dark Souls 2 Dark Souls 1 like pretty much the second half of this list I can play anytime one after another no problem Sekiro is not that type of game Sekiro you have to be in the mood for but when you're in the mood for it man is it a solid experience Okay, boys, we're getting into the second half of this list now. These games are really the cream of the crop. Like, this is, these are the Souls games I can play anytime and enjoy anytime. Uh, the number three spot is going to go to Dark Souls 2. This is probably going to be the most controversial pick of this list because a lot of people absolutely despise Dark Souls 2. But if you've been around this channel for uh, any number of time, you will know that I have a soft spot for Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2 is clunky, like there's no other way around it. It is a little bit different to all the other games. The atmosphere is a lot lighter. Um, the game does some questionable choices with like soul memory. The boss choices, like with the game being so oversaturated with bosses. Um, just like the environmental design the game i feel like didn't age too well a lot of the textures like especially wall textures and interiors and shit like that look really clunky which is not helped by the fact that the game is really bright yeah this game is not perfect however no other souls game to this date has offered you as much variety as dark souls 2 does the game is incredibly open from the start offers you a wealth of weapons, a wealth of playstyles, magic systems, and every single thing is viable. That's what this game does really well. Like, truly, no, none of the other Souls games offer you 
the kind of diversity that Dark Souls 2 does. Do you want to run, uh, I don't know, great sword hex build? Go ahead. Do you want to like run a pyromancy sorcery hybrid build using only spells? Go ahead. Do you want to just punch shit with your fists? Go and pick up the champion's ring? Go ahead. It's absolutely crazy how much variety this game offers. Combined with the fact that with just a little bit of trickery, it is possible to access almost all of the four kind of main areas from the start. Now, when I talk about Dark Souls 2, I am talking about Scholar of the First Sin, because Scholar of the First Sin is the definitive package for this game. I feel like no other Souls game has benefited from their DLCs as much as Dark Souls 2 did. The base game is meh, I would say. If we were judging the series just on Dark Souls 2 base game, this game would be a lot, lot lower. However, the three DLC packs and Scholar with all the, uh, the alternate paths and all that offers so much more. The DLCs are excellent, save for the throwaway areas. There are some really hard bosses there, uh, some crazy new equipment. And the whole questline with Aldia and the ending it offers really helps expand the game. Now, the game still has questionable choices, even in Scholar. I feel some of the kind of enemy placement is a little bit weird. And some of the gameplay mechanics, like these fucking fragrant branch statues being everywhere, is a little bit kind of off-putting because it throws off your pathing from the base game. However, still, Scholar of the First Sin is the definitive version of this game and offers more content than perhaps any other Souls game. Not to mention, this game has the chaddest PvP out of the whole series and no one is ever going to convince me that this game didn't have the best PvP. I've put so much, I've put so much time into this game's PvP, it's crazy. And I wish, I'm crying that it's not alive anymore. This game will always have a soft spot in my heart, no matter what people think about it. All right, this is going to be it. Like, from here on out, I may as well po put both of these games here because like, whatever I put, my, my choice is going to be spoiled. All right, let's go. Number two is going to go to Bloodborne and obviously number one spot is going to go to Dark Souls but let's talk about Bloodborne first man Bloodborne is so good like Sekiro it is kind of an odd child having a different setting to the other Souls games not medieval the atmosphere though is so good I feel like no other game has quite managed to nail the Victorian gothic uh, Lovecraftian horror style as Bloodborne did and I know it's not true like some neckbeard is gonna come into the comments and comment that it's not true Lovecraft because Lovecraft is all about that you can't fight against the opponents and here you can beat them up with a fucking saw spear it doesn't matter the atmosphere of this game is so good it's so good and it really kinda I don't know it's unique you play Bloodborne and you immediately get immersed in it the other thing about Bloodborne that's great is the combat system. Uh, again, it's a little bit left field compared to the other Souls games, but this combat system is so solid. They went with less weapons, and these weapons are really focused on like being specific tools, and you can really pick what you want to use. Um, the bosses, this game has excellent bosses, probably the best and most atmospheric uh, DLC pack. In fact, if we were like rating DLC packs, I would put the Bloodborne DLC in the number one sp spot. Like, th there's no question that this is the best DLC FromSoft has ever released. And, you know, I don't even know what else there is to say about this game. Uh, it's just truly a unique experience, and I love it. Uh, however, there are reasons why I cannot put it into the number one spot. The reason I cannot put it into the number one spot is that, much like Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne does suffer from being a little bit too linear. Uh, there's not a lot of options on where you can go and how you can go through the game. It's pretty much one set path. The other major issue I have with Bloodborne 
and I've talked about this many, many times on streams, in videos, etc. I feel like FromSoft should have made more of the weapons accessible from the very start. The issue with this game is that it's cheap as hell on upgrade materials. Because it's cheap as hell on upgrade materials, uh, you might have a situation where you find a weapon that you really, really want to use, but by that point you almost have a fully upgraded other weapon, and it's just a gigantic fucking hassle going through like chalice dungeons and grinding and all that to get more like blood rocks, for example, which is needed for the final upgrade kind of level. They are insanely difficult to get. Um, however, don't take this as uh, too big of a criticism. The other thing I could say about Bloodborne is that the playstyles are sometimes lacking. Like the magic system is completely like, you might as well write off the magic system. And if a Bloodborne 2 ever comes out, I hope they refine the uh, hunter's tools. That's what they're called, the hunter's tools. And actually introduce mana or something instead of them spending your Quicksilver bullets. Uh, so this game does have issues with build variety. You pretty much either go dex or strength, uh, but don't take this as major criticisms. I'm really nit nitpicking here, and these two in the number one and two spots, uh, any complaint I have is minor, you know, compared to the whole overall package. Bloodborne is absolutely wonderful, and I always enjoy playing it. You know, you guys know if you've ever been on one of my Bloodborne streams that I absolutely adore this game. All right, though, we have come to the number one spot. How long have I been going? Hey, 23 minutes. I actually got my thoughts out in a semi-coherent way and didn't like waste your time for like 50 minutes. It's much easier than ranking all the fucking bosses, believe me. But the number one choice has to, it just has to go to the OG. Dark Souls, the first Souls game I've ever played and I have a personal pet theory that no matter which of these games you've played first, it's pretty much always going to be your number one choice. Um, these games have such a like, god this is gonna sound, this is gonna sound stupid, but this game, these games make such an impact that your first one is always going to be the one that sticks with you the most. You know, there's just no way around it. It's like your first car, or I could use more sexual references, but let's not go there, you know. Dark Souls 1 is the game that propelled the series into, I guess, infamy, but also popularity. This game is just a perfect mix of everything that is right about all these other games. It is the perfect balance between having a weighty combat system but still feeling fast, having challenging but not unfair bosses, having challenging but not unfair areas, uh, with some caveats, and believe me, we'll get to the, some, the caveats, because one other thing I meant, I forgot to mention at the start, is I think none of these games are perfect. All of them have faults, but what doesn't, you know? And I, again, I feel like Dark Souls, in terms of gameplay and mechanics and everything, strikes the perfect middle balance between all of these games. And I feel like FromSoft, while trying to stray away uh, gameplay-wise uh, from Dark Souls, because, you know, they tried a slower combat system with Dark Souls 2, a faster combat system with Dark Souls 3, has never managed to quite capture what is so good about the combat system of the OG Dark Souls 1. Lots of weapon variety, boss weapons, spells, and everything. Like, what, what else can I say about it? You guys have been around a while on this channel. I've played this game so many fucking times that it's not even funny. Uh, it's almost an addiction, but somehow I keep coming back for more, even though I pretty much know the ins and outs of everything. PvP was okay in this game, I never really played too much of it, it was laggy as a motherfucker, but, you know, what can you do? This is not a fighting game, so what do you expect? Of course, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, the biggest elephant in the room for Dark Souls is that the second half of the game is so much weaker than the first especially when it comes to the areas and the bosses. The second half of the game still has excellent spells and excellent like weapons and all that. However, 
all four of the areas, Tomb of Giants, Lost Isolith, uh, New Londo, and the Duke's Archives, and their respective bosses have their weaknesses, especially Lost Isolith feeling like a complete afterthought. But all of these areas kind of feel uh, like they weren't as polished as the before Ornstein and Smoke section of the game, which has pretty much been confirmed. I mean, FromSoft had said that they didn't have time to properly finish the second half of the game because, man, if they did, this ranking wouldn't even be a question. Uh, still, the game is excellent. It's still enjoyable. Like, you can get through the second half. And aside from Lost Isolith, none of the other areas are too painful. But I do have to mention that uh, this game is obviously, obviously not perfect. Uh, none of these games are. However, for what it has given uh, and taken from me, I'm only kidding. Um, it's always going to hold a special place in my heart. And because of what it means to me and the fact that it introduced me to the game series and pretty much launched this channel, like without Dark Souls 2, this channel wouldn't be around. I am forever going to be thankful of uh, Dark Souls. God, it's, this sounds like a fucking like Oscar winning speech. Thank you, Dark Souls. I would like to thank Dark Souls for all it has given me and the trophy and the academy. Yeah, I'm going to stop sucking Dark Souls dick uh, and just wrap up this video here. Concluding my ranking. Um, yeah, this is my opinion and Again, don't take this too harshly. Uh, I, I like all of these games, I swear. Please, don't shit on me. Uh, but again, take this list as more of a which one would I like to play the most on any given day. And this is my honest ranking. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little ranking video. Second one I've done. It's probably going to be more in the future. We'll see. I don't really know what else I could rank. I guess like areas and shit like that. Well, we'll see if I have the patience to rank all the areas and I fu I'm fucking losing my voice so I'm gonna stop now because I've been babbling for like 25 minutes straight. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe if you're new here, turn on post notifications, take care and if I still have my voice, there's going to be more Sekiro coming. Peace out guys and goodbye.